So I wanted to do a squash video for all of you people who love so squash, summer squash, winter squash. We grew a lot of squash this year and we think maybe we learned some lessons. If you love squash and you want to comment on something that you think that maybe we missed out on, please just let us know in the comments uh, or if you have any questions, of course, just ask them in the comments. We always get back to everybody who comments. So let's get going. I want to start with how we started these different beds. We have two different sides and why we did it the way that we did it. We planted our squash two different sides. And when we did that, we interspersed the winter squash and the summer squash. The reason we did that was because we were trying to see whether or not tilling this side that Jason just showed you versus the no dig side would have an effect on the quantity of squash that we were able to harvest. Now, we did get a lot more squash out of the tilled side this year, but the no-till side was not shabby at all, and it did quite well. Um, so I think next year, one of the lessons that we've learned is that if you're gonna plant winter squash, you find a space for it that is out of the way, that you don't really have to go into very often, and the summer squash is in a more convenient place and you do a little bit more to it. And I'm gonna talk about what I think we should have done with our summer squash this year uh, and also talk a little bit about the press pest pressure next. If you grow summer squash, uh, particularly in a context like ours, where there's a lot of pest pressure, so vine borer, squash bug, cucumber beetle. I found other beetles today. I don't know what they are. But they look weird. Um, you probably want to do what we didn't do, which is to stake your plants to be very vigilant about trimming them. Now I trimmed this guy over here this morning and I'll show you the before and after pictures. But trimming them ensures that they keep producing. So if you are trimming everything up to where it's blooming, you're going to continue to get more leaves and more bloom and more production. Now, frankly, I'm sick to death of squash. There are 40 squash on the kitchen counter and I have to process them today. So I'm kind of done with the squash. If this squash decides it wants to die now, I'm fine with that. But I'll see, maybe we'll get some more uh, squash out of it. There is another option and it's worth thinking about. If your squash is going to be eaten by bugs like ours are, you can either work really hard to keep the bug population low, uh, watch for your squash vine borers, use your aluminum foil around the bottom, use BT injections. I might do that next year. I didn't try that this year, but I do have all the gear now to do it. can do that too. Um, you can spend hours every day looking for the uh, eggs of the squash beetle and do something about those. Or you can do what Steve from the garden does. He plants out his summer squash early, but then he starts some new seeds. And so when the bugs come and eat all of his squash, he yanks them out and puts in a new plant that, for the timing, will skip the squash vine borer and some of the major pest pressure. So there's a couple different options for you if bugs are a problem for you. Now in terms of how I controlled the bugs, I got myself a big vat of 
petroleum jelly and I would simply come out and put petroleum jelly on the eggs. And it's not the most attractive thing in the world, but it does keep the eggs from hatching or if they do hatch, then they drown as soon as they come out. But I did miss some. And so as a result, I needed to get some neem oil. So if there were any eggs that hatched, I had neem oil ready to go when I came out to look and I would just spray the thousands of baby squash bugs that I found um, and, with the neem oil and that worked like a charm. I don't like the neem oil necessarily because I think there's a good chance that you can hurt other bugs, but it is a way to help control. And I think at this point, most of the summer squash has survived. So I feel like we've kind of gotten over the hump in terms of the squash beetle. But the squash vine borer has done its damage. It's killed at least three plants. But there are a couple, and I'll show you now uh, some of the B-roll. There was one squash vine borer in this plant that I worked on today. But when I saw the hole, I went and got myself a toothpick and jammed the toothpick into the hole. And I think I killed the vine borer because the plant has survived. So that's also another way, if you happen to see it, you can use your toothpicks and just kill the little worm that's in there, if you're lucky. So I just want to mention that Andrea from Digging for Health, the toothpick idea was hers. Super awesome. Uh, and her other suggestion was, look, if you have the space, just plant lots. Not everything is going to kill your squash vines, and so you know, they might do some damage, but you're still going to get a harvest. But that works for us and in our context. Not everyone has that kind of space. Some people only have space to grow a couple of plants. So it is important to kind of think about how you might protect them and nurse them along. It just depends on your context. Other people don't have these kinds of bugs either. This was never a problem in Victoria. We never had this kind of pest pressure. These bugs are weird. Um, so it's been an adjustment for us too to try to figure out how to do it. Now Brian Siebert uh, wraps his uh, vines in aluminum foil which is also an option. A lot of people do that. I will try that next year. Brian had a problem with one of his plants this year that he felt rotted because it didn't get enough air due to the aluminum foil but eh, I don't know so maybe I'll try some with the aluminum foil and some I'll just use the BT on and see if that kind of makes a difference. That would be a great experiment for next year. Um, and again, we just want to thank everyone for their suggestions. When the bugs started, you guys were super supportive and had lots of ideas of how we might control them. And we really appreciate it. I think it helped save uh, a lot of these plants that we were able to take up some of those suggestions. So just wanted to thank everyone. Uh, and if you, again, if you have any suggestions or comments or I miss something about squash and growing squash, please let us know. And otherwise, stay awesome, everybody, and enjoy your squash. Okay, I got a question. Oh. If you had to pick one method, which one would it be? Uh, for controlling what? Or plant? No dig or till. So I think that there was a comment saying that maybe because you had, uh, it's the first year, you're going to get a lot out of the till side and not so much out of the no-till side. But next year, the no-till side is going to catch up. So I think the verdict is still out on that. Like, what if next year we get a good production out of the no-till side and this turns into a pile of weeds? So I think my verdict is still out, but I'm glad we didn't till both sides because I could not have kept up with the production. There's no way. So Perfect. I think that I've said the exact same thing. Okay. Oh. Time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. Okay. Thanks everybody. Stay awesome.